Boom, boom. Thank you and goody. Well, it's afternoon actually here in the UK. It's tea time. I got my cup of tea in my gardening mug. Although this is too precious to be allowed to drink in the garden. So hang on. Mm. Hello there and welcome. It's what day is it? I'm no, Thursday, 11th of March. I'm convinced it's Saturday because I've been rehearsing things I'm doing on Saturday all day. <laughs> and I've still got to fit in Friday yet. So uh, about half past, half an hour ago, I suddenly thought, oh, what is Thursday? I've got to do today's thing. <laughs> and I was preparing, ready to come and do Saturday's thing now. It's all very confusing. Um, this has been a slightly sort of bigger project than I imagined it was going to be. Welcome to you all too. Dogs of Influence. <laughs> Where? Oh, well, you need a microphone here. Let's see, I haven't got everything prepared. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Welcome to Dogs of Influence. You see, I can edit it, everything previous to this if it doesn't work out. Welcome to Dogs of Influence. Today, Thursday, <laughs> March the 11th, 2021. And uh, we are live and I'm going to do some live drawing. Uh, I'm going to draw a dog. Uh, another dog. I've drawn quite a few already. <laughs> And, uh, and and quite a few more to draw yet. Yeah, uh, let me tell you why. Let me click that. Um, uh, on the 25th of this month, I shall be... Th this is my second Walker, the boy who can talk to dogs book, which is being published on the 25th. And up until then, I was going to do 25 dogs. I wasn't well one day, so there'll be 24, but I'll do another one on the 26th, probably. So, uh, this book is all about Walker, who can talk to dogs. <clears throat> and in the next book, uh, I am intending there will be a kind of a big show, a dog show. And all the dogs there will be dogs of influence. They will be social media dogs, dogs with massive social media followings, uh, which are all <laughs> these kind of rich fantasy lives, um, which is the, the whole plan. And so I've asked uh, you to send in pictures of your dogs, the idea of the fantasy life that your dogs lead, um, to sort of build up a collection of dogs that I can bring out at this um, in in the third book, which hasn't been commissioned yet, but uh, we'll see what happens. <laughs> you have to believe things are gonna happen. Um, so, uh, and so I'm sort of plotting that story at the moment. And, oh, I've, no, I've forgotten again. Hang on, let me just check here. This is where it all gets very... Um, uh, see, well, this is where I, I think I have everything organised. And I need to find now. <laughs> I need to find Mavis. Uh, there we are. It's Kim. That's right. So Kim has sent me this. Kim Andrews, how are you? Um, Kim Andrews has sent me her dog who is called Mavis. And let's see Mavis, here we are. This is Mavis, marvellous Miss Mavis, is without doubt the fluffiest dog in the village. She is completely unaware that this has upset a number of her rivals. Uh oh. Everywhere marvellous Miss Mavis goes, she gets treated like a pampered celebrity. She's quite used to hearing people squeal with delight as she struts past them. She doesn't even notice. Children run up to her and ask if they can stroke her. Adults want to take a photograph. Marvellous Miss Mavis is always surprised and delights in saying, oh yes, of course, to these frequent requests. Marvellous Miss Mavis even has her own Facebook page and hundreds of fans from all around the world, but she doesn't realise her popularity because her virtual assistant manages all that for her. Golly, I wish I had one of those. Butter would not melt in Marvellous Miss Mavis's mouth, although she does have an alter ego called Mrs Yapster, who unfortunately yaps a lot and disturbs all the neighbours. I can't believe that. Uh, <laughs> surely that's not true. <laughs> so... Let's come back here. So I've been doing some little sketches and I first of all, she is so fluffy. Look, have a look again. She is so fluffy. You can't quite decide what shape her ears are at all. They're kind of hidden in all that fluff. And so, <laughs> so start with, I thought she was like a teddy bear, <laughs> but uh, it's not quite right, is it? Um, so I looked at some other Pomeranians. Uh, Miss Mavis is a Pomeranian. And some Pomeranians are like really small. They're like teacup kind of <laughs> little dogs. Um, but uh, Mavis is sort of 
big enough to fit in a handbag. Um, and so I, I sort of looked at some others and I kind of trying to work out the, this ear shape. And so I did. And again, I've been watching the great pottery throw down just the final to go, which might have happened, but we watch it on record. Um, and this is Siobhan McSweeney yet again, who appears quite frequently every well every now and then in this sketchbook. Well, maybe she doesn't in this sketch, maybe in the previous sketchbook. Oh, there she is. Yeah. So um, she sort of pops up every now and then in my sketchbooks as I watch the great pottery throwdown, which is a program here in the UK where this competition, you know, is like it's like one of those things knock out each week. You know, who's the best potter this week, that kind of thing. It's good fun. Um, so this is what I'm aiming to do. No, you don't want to see that. Um, this is kind of what I'm aiming to do now. So I'm going to get a piece of paper and a pencil. Which pencil shall I use? I'm going to use one of these. And I'll find my glasses. And so what I'm going to do, I'm, I'm sort of thinking about... Um, a character what I want is a character not a portrait and I've been kind of trying to work out the the proportions um, of, of a prom Pomeranian face and I want her head on one side just to make her look a bit more cute so I'll sort of tilt the head like that and the eyes are below this halfway mark like that and it's sort of sort of thirds like that so we can have our eyes there and then her nose and then this is where she becomes more of a character I think so I'm not making this part here sort of too sharp up into the nose as it were and giving her a human mouth okay <laughs> this will make her smile a bit more and um, maybe bring those lines out there a bit and little eyebrows and then the ears are sort of coming out almost at a tangent at the top there like that so very teddy bear like and then let's take this sort of angle here coming out there so so we're going to want this sort of big fluffy mane sort of coming out like that and then we want a sort of hind quarters like that and then a great big pom-pom on the top and so we'll have the sort of front legs will be sort of coming in about there and then the back legs sort of about there like that and that's kind of kind of there and I'm going to put a little marks about there and yeah so th those are the kind of the shapes that I'm after and now, well, let me zoom in a bit. Let me zoom in a bit. Um, I'm going to get my light pad and I'm going to stick this over the top. And when I do, that's going to sort of bleach out the camera a bit, probably. So I am going to switch off the overhead lights so you can see that better. And then I'm going to get some, let's put them back on again. <laughs> I'm going to get some Sea Rider Brighton layout paper. This is 50 grams per square inch. And um, I like using Sea White stuff. I'm not sponsored by them or anything like that. So a lot of the stuff I use here is Sea White. You find all the links down below. And uh, I'm afraid you can't get Sea White in the States generally. You can get the, the these. I think uh, which are their uh, journals travel journals so I've got a link to that down below um, but if if there isn't a US link on Amazon then I put a, a similar product um, to it and a similarly a similarly reasonably priced product <laughs> and um, so I put that this is very thin paper that you can put over the top. We were discussing last week that you know, animators will use paper. Like, actually, animators will use even thinner paper. They use stuff called onion skin paper. Um, and we want to have, um, I want to get this absolutely worked out how I want it to be. And so I'm sort of drawing in these bits. So it's kind of where the I'm not quite happy with the 
um, where the eyes are looking. I want them really looking at us. And I think I think my pencil isn't sharp enough, so I'm going to sharpen that up a little bit. So uh, 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 uh. there we go. I can see the tip of the pencil there, and I'll bring that around like that. And I think maybe it wants to come more sort of up that way. She'll make it more of a smile. Oops. And then a little bottom lip like that. And then we're going to want the teeth as well. But they're very human teeth. So this is a character and not a portrait. So I want her to be a character in a book. And and I'm making her I'm making a marvellous Miss Mavis. I'm not making her Miss Yapstra. Um, so I want to know that those lines are going to be about there. Um, and so we're going to have the sort of paws are going to be like something like that. So they're very fluffy covered paws. Um, and then we're going to want this enormous pom pom on the back like that. And then the back fur will sort of go across like that. And then we'll want the paws there. Uh, and they will be quite oh fluffy too. This this is a really this is a six B, so it's really really soft, and keeps um, snapping as you just noticed. Uh, unlike Miss Mavis, who would never snap. Uh, okay. <laughs> so uh, I'm happy with that now. So I think I need yeah a little bit more under there. I think just to, as a guide. Good. So I can take that off, and I forgot to take the. <laughs> let me turn the overhead light off. So now I'm getting some watercolor paper. I need to get the right side. And again, this is um, Sea White watercolor paper. This is their 350 gram um, paper. So this is quite heavy duty watercolor paper, which means it's not really going to ruckle and. Um, you sort of bubble up while you're doing it. And now we have to remember here that Miss Mavis is the fluffiest <laughs> dog in the village. So, so that is what we are after. We are after fluffiness. So these are all fairly straight lines going on here. So, um, so we really want to have fluffiness. <laughs> which is not an easy thing to to achieve um and and that's going to be sort of the the inner ear part there and so i think these kind of lines need to be fairly random sort of delineating this kind of mane around the head like that and let's draw the eyes and I'm going to do just slightly flat on the bottom of the circle. And that will just give her a slightly more sort of happy, cheerful kind of look. And we do the eyes in there. So let's tighten that up a bit. And then the nose will be there. I'm just going to put the little nostrils in there. And then we're going to bring that around there like that. And then a happy little smiley teeth. She wants to look cute. Of course, when I first saw the name Mavis, <laughs> um, anyone watching in Britain, well, of a certain age anyway, is that a dot of ink? I'm not quite sure. Let me just, I can't think what else it is. In which case, I'm going to have to just add some extra little bits like that. Anybody of a certain age in, in Britain, Here's the name Mavis, and we'll immediately go, Oh, Mavis, oh! <laughs> um, <laughs> Mavis was a, a character in a long running soap opera in the UK called Coronation Street. And um, <laughs> dear Mavis, she was very put upon. She had such a funny little voice. <laughs> Oh, she was married to Derek. Oh, Derek, Derek, and Derek was um, a, a much put upon 
sweet or candy salesman. At least he was when I watched it. And interestingly, um, I think Derek's character used to fascinate me. Uh, and because one episode he'd be full of the joys of spring and he got some fantastic new scheme he was working on and you know and he was going to sell all these new things and fantastic and the next week he'd be oh, down in the dumps and oh Mavis oh Derek cheer up and she was always having to cheering him up <laughs> and uh, and then suddenly one day I thought he's an interesting character because he was kind of a minor character I don't know I suppose some people thought he wasn't um, but anyway, um, so so suddenly one day I thought he's really weird because one minute he's kind of manic and the next minute he's all depressed and something went ding in my head. I thought manic depressive. Where have I heard that phrase before? So I had to go to the library and look up manic depression and the, oh, it's a real thing. And um, so I don't know. I think I wanted to be. When I was about 13, I sort of thought that... I'm not sure these toes are right, anyway. When I was 13, um, I think these should be covered up with fur. Um, I kind of decided I wanted to be a psychologist when I was 14, 13 or so. Um, but that didn't really come to anything. But it's always been an interest in the background, the sort of the, the way the human mind works. And so... Um, so yeah, I sort of found that really kind of interesting, and in some ways, I thought mm, that kind of resonates somewhere with me. I kind of recognise bits of myself in that description. Uh, I certainly recognise other people in the description. And nowadays, we don't talk about manic depression. It's now it's bipolar. Um, but um, I don't know why on earth I'm talking about that. Mavis. <laughs> oh, Derek! Let me put the Derek. Put the light on. Oh, that's better. There we go. You can see what's happening. So now I'm going to paint this. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. So if I put her over there a bit, then you might be able to see some of the paint. And this is should be fairly simple to paint. Um, and so I'm getting my set here. You will also find links to this down below. This is a Winsor and Newton Cotman sketching set. It was a really good starter set so if you've not done watercolor before and you fancy it get one of these and just follow along with these things i'll try and make it easy better still better still come and join me on patreon let me just do that if you enjoy these shows and you'd like to buy me a cup of coffee to keep me going head on over to patreon.com slash where you will find all the details of how you can support this channel in the meantime on with the show Indeed, on with the show. And why why am I saying that? It's because on Saturday, this is what I've been practicing all day. It's, it's <laughs> Saturday, I can't go live on here because I'm going to be live on Zoom with my patrons. And um, so we'll be doing something. I'm not going to say what, because <laughs> that will spoil the excitement and the anticipation and all that kind of thing. Um, we will be doing something on Zoom, a live tutorial. And so we'll all sort of get together and say hello from all around the world. So the, that tea time, uh, that will be mostly folks from Europe and the States. So I do another one in the morning, which, uh, which is OK for everybody kind of east of London. Um, um, what am I trying to do here? Yes, yeah, so I want that to be around there. Uh, so I do one in the morning for people sort of east of London and we have um, as far as New Zealand we have Nikki coming to join us and uh, and then in the afternoon then we have folks from all over the states come to join us in, in different states and time zones and also from Europe so it's really interesting to just come and meet different people who are if you're watching this, obviously uh, you kind of like this kind of stuff, and so you'd probably really like 
the other people too. And in fact, if you look in the chat, you probably find half of them there already <laughs> uh, watching away. And you've probably been saying hello to them all week already in the chat. <laughs> so, so this is a great white pom pom here. And so I'm just kind of just doing a little sort of bit of whoosh like that. So yeah, so I'm having to pre-record Saturday's Dog of Influence. Um, and while I'm doing that, then I can, of course, get completely confused as to what day it is. Um, and I got to keep remembering that tomorrow is Friday and I still got one to do for Friday. I said to get to this time tomorrow and go, oh, I haven't prepared anything. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's a bit of, uh, hmm, I'm not quite sure. It's a marathon. That's what it is. So I'm putting a little bit of sh sort of darker in there. So this is mostly a kind of a bit of ochre, yellow ochre, with a little bit of little bit of scarlet in just to sort of warm it up. And you could put some burnt sienna in like that, um, which I'm going to put in underneath there. And then here we want this to be kind of darker along there to. And then that can sort of fade out to there and again here. So I think that wants to be a little bit more darker in there. And then and I'm using the tip of the brush, so I'm getting that, um, getting the point to create these little kind of flicks. And then we also want to have, uh, I want to have it just this little sort of darker bit around there. And then that's going to sort of come flicking up around there like that. And then I want to just sort of keep this sort of <laughs> fluffiness going somehow. It's not an easy thing to do, but this is intended to be a character in a story. So I don't want it to be too complicated. And as I keep saying, it's not um it's not a portrait so i might have a little bit of sort of pink down at the tips of the toes and then you want something sort of a bluey kind of gray so grays uh, we don't get a black thank goodness in this one because black is it really dirties up um watercolor and and we were talking yesterday about granularity as well and black tends to be a very granular color and it kind of doesn't you can see here this is let me zoom right in you can see this is really oh i have to focus a bit more oh hang on a minute oh there. is that focus is that oh it's wobbling the camera about that's probably really focused now isn't it? uh you can see um that the the color here is very very evenly spread out but if if you've got black or some other some other sort of greens and blues it, it looks quite gritty um, and also black will just sort of punch a hole in the paper it's just too dark whereas all the other colors when you're doing watercolor are really subtle black just kind of it just punches a hole in there so i, I don't have black and they don't give you a black you don't really need the white either um, unless you're going to do highlights at the end but i like to use the paper for the highlights because the hi the paper is is where the light is coming from so that is the brightest part of the picture but if you kind of miss that and you paint over it by mistake you can then also get a bit of white at the end and just <laughs> fit it in but grays uh so if you need a gray then you need to get a blue this is a french ultramarine um and i'm just gonna I always have a bit of kitchen towel on here so I'm going to get a bit of French ultramarine and then a bit of burnt umber and that will give you a grey. So that's probably quite a browny grey. So a little bit more blue will make it a more of a bluey grey. And it's, oh, that's too, yeah. <laughs> it's, and you just have to keep mixing to get the mix that you want. So I'm going to do this nose like that, leaving that little bit of white and then just dab in some fresh water in there and that'll get it kind of looking liquid and shiny and 
Ah, yes, there we go. And I think we need a little bit of pink around here as well, like that. There. And then this grey. This is what I was trying to do. So we have some sort of grey underneath there. And just to sort of show that this is sort of a white chest and not a, a bit where you've left out and forgotten to paint it. And then we'll have a bit more shade underneath there. So I should have let that dry. That's a shame. Okay. Uh, here it has dried, so I'm going to add a bit more sort of shade into there. And I think we could probably have a bit more in there as well, up in the top, and sort of flicking back in there. Um, want a little bit in the bottom there. We're going to want to let's have a bit of on the blue side into the underneath there and then we're going to need to do these eyes so I'm going to get some orange um, some yellow roll that there we go and a bit of red in with it if you've got questions and everything do put them in the chat and I'm going to come and read all that at the end and sort of answer your questions and stuff like that or comments <laughs> can, maybe you can explain why I'm losing subscribers <laughs> doing all these live shows <laughs> that's very funny isn't it they always say when you uh, when you pivot a a youtube channel that you're going to start losing subscribers who go whoa that's not what i signed up for and it's very alarming uh, uh but but I, I, I think I'm going to be doing a lot more live stuff. And so I just got to, I got to stick with it and believe that those who like it will stick with it. <laughs> and more will come. Right, I'm just going to blast this with my hairdryer. It's um, very convenient to have a hairdryer on hand to do that, <laughs> which of course you can't do if you're sort of out sketching. Uh, I did actually look on Amazon to see if they had a battery powered, um, uh, sort of lithium battery powered hairdryer of some sort of sort like that. And I think they did. And it sort of said, do not buy this product. It's lethal mine caught fire or something. So oh, I better not get that. <laughs> so I put a bit more shade underneath there. And a hairdryer is very useful just to sort of get on with it. In fact, on the pottery showdown as well, they use kind of these hairdryer things that, um, more heat guns rather, to dry out their pottery. And I certainly remember when, oh, when I was about 18 or something like that, and the, this romantic idea of painting. And, <laughs> went out to the park at about six in the morning in the middle of winter to watch the sunrise I was going to paint the sunrise and as I mixed the paint as I touched the paint to the paper the water would freeze <laughs> and the brush would stick to the paper <laughs> so, so that wasn't very successful so yeah careful where you do your <laughs> Uh, you probably, if you want to do winter sunsets and sunrises and when minus 10 or something, then go and take a photograph and work from that afterwards because you're going to find it hard doing it out there en plein air. And, um, yeah. So I think we just need a little bit more grey on the ground. And I think we are just about there. So I'm going to put a little bit of shadow in there like that. And I'm cleaning the brush and then I'm just going to let the let that just sort of filter down into the clean water that I've just kind of put down there like that. And I think I'm just going to leave it maybe a little tremble, a little tremble in the tail. But that's all. And let me oh, oh. Try not to turn the tea over. There we are. There's Miss Miss Daisy. What did I say? <laughs> Marvelous Miss Daisy. 
Marvellous Miss Daisy. Marvellous Miss Mavis. Uh, Marvellous Miss Mavis. Oh, Mavis. Right. <laughs> and we are back. <laughs> so, um, if I can find my Wacom pen, then I'll be able to come back to here and have a look at your comments. So let's come right back up to the top and see what you have to say. Um, um, good luck, Gabriel. There we are. Probably faint. Oh dear, you have to be very brave, Gabriel. You, I imagine you're gone. Uh, <laughs> I'm very squeamish about injections <laughs> and jabs. <laughs> and it's the it's, it's the thought of the needle going in. And whenever I turn on the TV the, on the news, there they are. Jab, jab, jab. It's like. It's like news people can't think of anything else to do. We're going to talk about COVID now. So let's put a picture of somebody having an injection on it in close up. So you can really see the needle going in. Anyway, <laughs> Trails TM, I hope you are feeling better after your <laughs> injection yesterday. Um, yes, you are good. Excellent. Father and Son TV blog. Good day. How are you doing? Out there, Philippines, I think. Karina, yeah, the pottery show is getting so exciting. It is. Yeah, <laughs> all these poor people around the world who are watching this great pottery showdown. What is it? Slam down, pot down, whatever is it? Um, what is it all about? Um, Karina says you should have been a good psychologist. However, you are always cheerful. Not imagine depressed at all. For oh, uh, my moments <laughs> when when I start losing subscribers. <laughs> So uh, Judy says the patrons Zoom paint together are really good. They are. I'm sure Judy will be there. And Karina. Kota, I have some rotting stuff. Okay. What is that then? What What's rotting? Bananas? Uh, I don't know. It's Karina. Yes, the patrons Zoom doodles are so cool. Thank you. Your drawing looks like a cat. Well, it does look a bit cat-like, doesn't it? <laughs> it's, it's the ears. That's what it is. Uh, Electron Gamer says, hi, hi, and hi, pretty, or hip, pretty, hip, pretty, hi, pretty. Uh, says, heart, hands, and flowers. Uh, there we are, hi, pretty. Good luck with the vaccine. Stay safe and be well. Yeah, big shit. You used to be able to get a small, flat hairdryer the size of a paperback book, but they're all a bit chunky with a handle now. Stacey Newby, you've done such a nice variety of ups. Thank you. Pups. There we go. <laughs> I do that. Uh, <laughs> Octavia, what is your favourite thing to draw or paint? Um, well, that's tricky, isn't it? That's tricky. I used to say cats without question. Um, and uh, because I'd sort of worked out how to draw cats or my version of cats anyway. Uh, and I used to draw cats and they would stand up on their back legs and basically they were human beings um, and they would talk and go to school and do all sorts of stuff like that. Uh, <laughs> basically I drew cats because I didn't want to draw human beings because human beings were so difficult. And then I just actually sort of one day thought, let me let's do a little bit of work on human beings, actually go out and sketch some and things like that. And then suddenly I thought, oh, actually human beings are quite interesting. So I think um, people are, I, I really enjoy drawing people. Um, I really enjoy going out and sketching them. Um, I don't seem to be able to do that at the moment. It's very frustrating, very frustrating. Um, and, and, and and also human beings are sort of infinitely oh, variable, aren't they? Um, and I, I know I look in my Instagram feed and obviously I get lots of stuff comes in watercolor, particularly watercolor painting and it's, you know, lots and lots of pretty flowers and pretty scenes and things and um, and then the people that get that come up in the pictures they're all beautiful girls and just more beautiful girls <laughs> and I think it's just, it's just you know sort of old people sitting around in the railway station are far more interesting to draw than pretty girls so uh, that's the kind of thing that I like drawing um, and Irina, uh, Irina, Irina Magea says, all the dogs are cute. Amazing job. Thank you very, very much. 
And you have no more comments. And I've probably said far too much. Uh, so I'll give you I'll give you about ten seconds if you've got more comments or anything you want to ask. <laughs> Otherwise, uh, we're sort of done for today, I think. Um, and I can get back to you planning what happens on Saturday and tomorrow. I think about tomorrow as well. Oh, it's there's a lot to do. Uh, it's <laughs> no more comments coming through. No more comments. What have we got? Um, no, I'm going to give you another five seconds or so. See if anything happens. Uh, 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 and this is kind of a weird thing to do at the end of a end of a show, isn't it? So I should have a kind of a, a way to kind of bring this all to an end. But but that's part of what I'm doing. What part of why I'm doing this as well is, is to get really um, you know, is, is, is practice at doing live streaming as well. So, <laughs> Joseph Bill says, great job, Shoot. Thank you, Joseph. <laughs> um, so I think basically I'm going to go and make myself a fresh cup of tea. And I suggest you go do the same. And um, I will see you. Yes, I will see you tomorrow at four o'clock. I will be back here having lost several more uh, subscribers. Look, no new subscribers today. If you are not subscribed to this channel, look, click down there. Click down there. You will see a little sign saying subscribe. Uh, <laughs> click that and make sure you are subscribed. And when you do, ring the little bell. And when it sort of comes up, say you want notific all notifications. And then you'll find out when I'm putting up new uh, live uh, channels. I can see myself pointing in the, in, in the screen here. So you can see when I come up with new, <laughs> new, new shows and you'll know when they're coming up. So, um, yeah, I think I'm going to say that's it. And thank you very much uh, for... Oh, hang on a minute. I did have a... Have I got that one? Yes. <laughs> so many buttons to press. Thank you very much for watching. Um, keep watching. What do I normally say? Well, there you go. That's how to draw dogs. <laughs> That's how to draw a pomerain. <laughs> thank you very much for watching. <laughs> and in the meantime... Keep drawing, drawing, drawing. Practice, practice, practice. And I'll see you next time. You take care now. Bye-bye. Well, thank you so much for watching and make sure you click that little subscribe button. And when you do, ring the bell so that you get notifications of when I am going to go live next. You can come along and join in and bring your ideas as well. In the meantime, stay safe, keep well, and keep drawing, drawing, drawing. Practice, practice, practice. And I'll see you next time. You take care now. Bye-bye.